Hey, this is Sabrina Monarch of monarchastrology.com and Magic of the Spheres podcast. And looking into the upcoming week leading up to the spring equinox, we have a special storyline happening around the sun in that the sun will conjunct Neptune and then conjunct Mercury in a short period of time. And Mercury and Neptune will also conjunct in between that and the three of them will be together. Um, this is happening between March 15th and March 17th. And I want to speak a moment to what a Kazemi is and why I think they're special. A Kazemi is when any planet is conjunct the sun um, with an orb of one degree before or after. And it's this moment of illumination where the sun is kind of giving this ritual bath to the planet um, that it's touching. And the planet is also infusing the sun. I find that sun Kazemis or sorry, Kazimis, you don't have to say Sun Kazimi, but I find that Kazimis are these moments of vision. Like we simply have to behold them. We simply can bask in them, though it helps to know what to look for. So that's the purpose of this video. One thing I think about, like an image that came to me with the Kazimi is like the clouds parting and those distinct sun rays that look like heaven shining down um, as like, we're going to be having those kinds of moments of something appearing, something magnificent showing itself to us. So the dates and times for these events, um, this is 2023. By the way, I had someone pop on my comments and say I should let you know what the year is. Um, we're talking about March 2023. Um, but March 15th at 4.39 p.m. Pacific, the sun and 25 degrees of Pisces will conjunct Neptune in 25 degrees of Pisces. The next day, March 16th at 10.13 a.m. Pacific, Mercury, still in 25 degrees of Pisces, will conjunct Neptune in 25 degrees of Pisces. And then the following day, March 17th, 3.44 a.m., the sun will be in 26 degrees of Pisces, conjunct Mercury in 26 degrees of Pisces, with Neptune still hovering there at 25, so the three of them will be together. So here's some possibilities of what's going to be illuminated this week, and specifically around March 15th, 17th. First off, with the sun in Pisces, we experience a vision by being porous and generally open and susceptible. Pisces is this way by nature. Native Pisces sun individuals are often aware of how open they are, and they might do something to tend to that um, and filter that, like an artist being careful about the art that they expose themselves to because it might influence their own channel, or someone doing a ritual cleansing bath to clear themselves of excess mental or spiritual influence. Right? Like once we're collecting all that influence, it's just the water we're swimming in and we don't really know the difference. But when we do something to actually clear and cleanse like the Virgo polarity to Pisces, then we really see um, the quality of what we're taking in. For Pisces, illumination can happen both in moments of intoxication. So being under an influence, Right. And this is not necessarily an intoxicant, like a drug or something like that, though it can be. Um, it can be something like a dazzling performance or the mood of a party or the spell of romantic attraction or the allure of a song. Right. So we're like under the influence of something. And Pisces is that part of us that can be so open to the muses, so open to inspiration. And illumination with Pisces can also happen when we step away from a given influence and reflect on it or return to a home base frequency um, and experience the various visions that come when the influence washes away and it reveals what remains or what has changed. You know, as I was writing this, I was thinking about like having a really um, enchanting, beautiful, fun, ecstatic night out. And then coming home and taking like a candlelit bath and just dissolving the night and having that kind of meditative moment where there has been so much influence being around the party and so many people and, and whatnot, but then in solitude or returning to a home base, there's this like um, filtration and this capacity for there to be vision inside of that. 
So I think about Pisces as, you know, it's a mystical sign, but not everyone plays out Pisces in a mystical way, right? Like it could be very much about like God and divinity, but it could also be about ecstasy and joy and compassion and being connected to people or music or animals. Like Pisces is vibing basically and connecting deeply with the universe or connecting deeply with um, inspiration or service or compassion. Um, and so inside of that, I see both like a leaning into being so immersed and also the kind of spiritual after effect of taking in those influences and reflecting on them. So a major theme Pisces can bring that we would want to be aware of for not only Pisces season, but this special like solar moment of these two Kazemis um, is compassion and understanding, the kind that we're able to access when we soften our own egoic filters, right? So we could be having an argument with someone and be so sure that we're right, they're wrong, like we're really in our own perspective and nothing necessarily happens there, right? It's one thing to stand our ground, but to have that moment of like really actually having a softening, seeing the other person's perspective, seeing our own kind of karmic storyline, our own spiritual initiations that are happening through that moment. And there's a, a dissolving of our own egoic boundaries and a capacity for um, some deeper experience to come through right? Not having boundaries can be a problem with Pisces too. So um, always discernment. These conjunctions, just FYI, will all happen in the third decan of Pisces, um, which is associated with the 10 of cups in the tarot. And so some recommended listening, if you want to go deeper into that, um, Christopher Marmalejo and I recorded a podcast episode on magic of the spheres about the 10 of cups and the 10 of pentacles specifically, diving into the third decan of Pisces and Virgo. So I'll leave the link in the notes for that. So now I'll go through and share some specific themes about what's being illuminated through Sun Neptune, Mercury Neptune, and then Sun Mercury, all in Pisces. So for Sun Neptune, this is drawing our attention to the sublime. The Oxford definition of sublime is of such excellence, grandeur, and beauty as to inspire great admiration or awe. This can also be when the sublime itself becomes an altered state, like being taken away by an artwork or a sunset, which I think we, we know is a very pleasure, pleasurable experience, and it takes a softening or a receptivity or an openness to be able to surrender to that, right? We're not always there, but maybe with the sun Neptune, we have a moment, right? Last year during the sun Neptune Kazemi, I had a huge mystical experience that involved going to an art gallery and being so taken and so enamored by a painting that I was just beyond myself. And I had to take the painting home. And I had this whole like journey that ensued with the painting, but essentially like that painting um, melted or dissolved or captivated me in some kind of way. And it's not every day that I experience that, right? But Sun Neptune can be those moments where you really, um, you are taken away by something sublime. Our vision can fuse with fantasy. So Sun, vision, Neptune, fantasy. But fantasy comes in many genres. Thus, we can have different moments, say, of like self-inflation or feeling on top of the world, right? Sun does involve that kind of centered perspective um, versus feeling like nothing or excruciatingly unimportant or shameful, right? Sun is like shining light, right? So when we shine light on parts of ourselves, we can be like, wow, how beautiful, or we can be like, that's so shameful. You know, the sun involves both of those kinds of heights and lows. Do you think about the sun and its shadow too? The sun at least during this Kazemi may pierce through fantasy and offer moments of remembering like, hey, you're high or it's just a movie, you know? Uh, so we may find the creative capacity or we may find that we have creative capacity to direct or shift the frequency or the genre, if you will, of the living artwork that we're inside of. 
right? Like our eyesight and like what we choose to focus our lens and our attention and our sight upon, like that's our own kind of illumination in some sense. Um, the eyes, luminaries, um, we kind of direct the film that we're viewing by where we cast our eyes, right? What we focus on, what we pay attention to. And at the same time, Neptune is a powerful intoxicant, right? So when I feel dosed by a planet or dosed by an experience, I might be able to see like, why well, I'm really living out this genre or this kind of flavor. And even though I can see that this is going to pass, um, I'm still in it. I'm still in the sea of it and I can't necessarily shake it off. Um, so with Sun Neptune, we can be like, having these moments of like, oh, I'm, I'm a creator and I, I'm creating my aesthetic experience. Or we may at least simply be aware of like, I'm a little bit, I'm tripping right now, <laughs> you know, or like I'm having an experience. And that clarity gives a certain level of detachment. And then at the same time, we could also be really immersed and surrendered into that flow or into that experience. Then Mercury, Neptune, and Pisces, and the illuminations with that. And though Mercury, Neptune itself is not um, a Kazemi, as a Kazemi is the sun conjunct another planet, Mercury and Neptune are still close enough um, to the sun that they are also Kazemi, but they're next to each other. So I wanted to reflect on the Mercury-Neptune conjunction for you as well. Some thoughts here. Um, lyric poetry and inspiring language like mercury and pisces is a very poetic like unconventional placement uh very mystical often or just like really creative with language um and you bring neptune in as well and that can be a sense of being like word salady or lost in the sauce as well um but it could also be that sense of um inspiration There could be something about dissolving logical structures and having a new perspective as a previous mental grip loosens. Mercury Neptune is not necessarily a transit where we feel like on top of it or like super organized mentally. Um, it's more of like a right brained, intuitive, watercolor, artistic kind of space. And so inside of that, maybe some of our um, more rigid thinking has the space to loosen up. There could be a vulnerability to Mercury Neptune of being out of place or being like a stranger in a strange land, right? So the image for this is like being in a foreign land and not speaking the native for the, the local language but trying to figure something out and the kind of melty, sometimes magical experience that ensues where because you can't go by the normal signs and signals as everyone else, you're still interacting with reality, but you're doing it in a very like different kind of on the margins kind of way. And sometimes that yields a lot of creativity and invention and different kinds of adaptations, though it can of course also feel a little overwhelming or stressful at times. And then there's insights or connections that can be made in trance or flow states with Mercury Neptune. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in Sun Mercury in Pisces and these illuminations. This could relate to moments where we grasp an understanding of the whole, of the gestalt, of the theme, of a very large idea or concept before we've even organized it in language or in logical order, so having visions. This happened to me last night, um, not that the transit's active, but just as an example where I woke up and was having all of these understandings of like the current Jupiter Chiron transit. And I was like, I know it, I understand it. And then I got out my phone to write it because I couldn't sleep with this space. And I realized that I didn't have all these ideas at the top of my mind. In my vision, it's like, oh, I know it, but I actually had to like catch up to my vision and writing. So I think with Sun, Mercury, and Pisces, it's like that moment of like understanding, but then maybe there's a little bit of a catch up process in terms of transmitting that. Um, or 
it might not need that. Like if you have a vision of a painting or like, you know, some a song or something like that, and you just want to flow with it and you're just in that flow state, maybe the order or the patterning of it just happens as it happens. Same thing with like poetry too. Like you can flow. It's not the same as like writing a manual where you have to be very methodical and ordered. So there's something about like having a an oceanic moment of consciousness where we're in the soup of it and it doesn't necessarily have an order. There could be a moment of understanding that's a feeling that comes in images um, or abstractions, almost like synesthesia. It could be ideas or messages that come through liminal trance states, like upon first waking up in the morning or before falling asleep at night in that kind of hypnagogic state. The possibility that there are, um, that these are made memorable because of the sun um, and the sun's illumination support, but perhaps we also participate by doing what we can to remember, like writing our dream down when we wake up and still remember it before it fades away possible that it will be more striking and more memorable though because of the sun. It could be oracular or psychic messages from clairvoyant or intuitive people or from our own channel or divination. It could be moments of truth or divinity that come from unconventional sources, casual divination from the environment, like maybe you didn't throw cards, but the symbols and the the oracle is showing up casually in your environment anyway. And messages from unconventional sources, what I mean by that is that um, it could be like Mercury and Pisces-like things or Mercury and Pisces-like characters, or just that sense that it's not what you expected. It's not like going to the Oracle and getting a message, but it it just comes through happenstance. Um, it could be like some possible images, which I don't necessarily mean literally. Um, a small child that says something strangely resonant and channeled, or a stranger speaking about one thing, but the meaning seems layered and doubled, like the universe is winking at you. Or a person on the street who's not really in this world, so to say, saying something that strikes a chord or lands, like anything along those lines where it's like the, almost like the accidental messenger. And then interpreting divination is a skill, being able to discern what's meaningful versus what's random or being able to access clarity as the one interpreting the messages. And Sun, Mercury, and Pisces could be these moments of clarity, right? Like the messenger is speaking this like mystical kind of coded or nonlinear message, but it's about us not just tracking the sign, but really having the vision of how a sign or a symbol lands. And so in summary of all of this, and before I get into that, I just want to say, if you have studied evolutionary astrology with me before in my intensive, I'm offering a program for alumni this spring called Cosmic Mirror, a transit, a course in transit literacy and practice. And we'll be getting into transits, world transits, personal transits as a group, bringing in our experiences, looking at our natal charts and the transits um, juxtaposed over it. And coming up with delineations and analysis together as a group. So learning how to see these things, learning how to read the magic of transits happening. This is one of my favorite things of just having these moments like it's a full moon in Gemini and I go to the market and I meet a woman who's chatty and befriends me and is asking me all these curious questions. (laughs) She tells me that she's a Gemini son And her name is Celine and it's the full moon, right? Celine means moon in Gemini. And I just happen to meet this Gemini named Celine. Like stuff like that happens in my life all the time. It happens to like to all of you, I'm sure, but we don't always have the sight or the context. And the weird thing is that once we do have the sight or the context, because we're practicing astrology, It's like the universe is playful back and is like, oh, you're paying attention. Like, let me throw you these magical experiences. So I think that transits, you know, to speak of the sublime are pretty sublime to witness. And this course um, that I'm offering 
is like a practicum. It's an opportunity to practice in group. The communities in these courses are always amazing, as you know, if you've studied with me before. So I'll leave the link in the notes um, to learn more about that course. And you can simply email me, sabrina at monarchastrology.com to apply. And then to summarize what we've been talking about here with the um, Kazimis and the Piscean illuminations is that this is a dreamy lineup with the possibility to induce visions of the sublime and foster deeper compassion and understanding. It's worth contemplating the literal sun and the quality of light and warmth right, and vision, and reflecting on how we can call in or ally with the solar quality to achieve understanding in places that we felt in the dark before. The process of being confused or being in the dark, etc., is not wrong or something less than being illuminated, right? It's like part of the storyline, like jumping into the confusion or being in the mystery and then having the moment of sight. So that illumination is a contrast. So this transit, these transits suggest that illumination is happening right now, that it's on schedule, right? And it's happening in a place where we can get confused in Pisces. We're like so connected with so many things. We're um, so fused with the universe that sometimes there is like a sense of, well, what's what? And the sun actually helps create that um, parsing out. Like if you were to walk into a room in the dark, you can't really sense the objects, but you turn on the light and you can see distinct objects. That's what the sun does. It gives us that sense of clarity. So we may look, we may point our awareness to how we're gaining clarity or illumination upon something that hasn't seen so much light in the recent past, right? And it might feel um, joyful. It might feel like a miracle. It might feel like knowledge. It might feel like a spiritual experience. Um, let me know. Let me know how you experience this transit in the comments. If you want to come back after watching too and report anything, I love to hear stories. Um, but do like this video, leave a comment. And I will be back again with more videos soon. Thank you for being here.